Okay, so we talked a little bit today about pH, which is a scale used to measure how acidic or basic a substance is when it's placed in a watery solution. So what is an acid versus a base? Well, the definition may differ a little depending on who you ask, but generally we say that an acid is a substance that produces positively charged hydrogen ions when placed into a solution with water. Um, an acidic substance will also usually taste sour, although with strong acids they can be dangerous, so you definitely do not want to taste them or even put them anywhere near your face or bare skin. On the flip side, a base is a substance that produces negatively charged hydroxide ions. That's an oxygen and a hydrogen atom bonded together when placed into a solution with water. A food that is basic will taste more bitter, although again, strong bases also can be dangerous and you don't want to taste them or put them anywhere near your face or even bare skin. Uh, so pH is used to measure, on this scale, pH is used to measure, generally speaking, how acidic or how basic a substance is. The pH scale goes from between zero and 14, with seven being neutral. What this means is that a strong acid is going to be closer to this end of the pH scale, a weak acid is going to be around here, a weak base is going to be between 8 and 11, and then a stronger base is going to be closer to, you know, 11 to 14. Um, we can use various substances as indicators to test the pH of a substance too. One such indicator is the pH paper that we saw in class that changes color depending on what pH the substance is. But another indicator is a compound called anthocyanin. So this is anthocyanin right here. Um, it's a purple pigment that often gives plant parts like fruits or flowers their purple color. And you can kind of see the purple color here. It's also present in a lot of leaves. Um, in small amounts, which is why some tree leaves turn more reddish or purple, as the green chlorophyll pigments in them decom decompose in the fall, these are some of the ones that are left behind, along with various other pigments that produce more of the yellows and oranges that we see too. Um, anthocyanin can also be found in fruits like blueberries, blackberries, and even in red cabbage, which is where we're going to extract it from. So let's go back in time and I'll show you really quickly how I actually extracted this anthocyanin from red cabbage. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut up a bunch of this red cabbage and then I've thrown it in a blender so you can get this kind of purple mush. And then I take this mush and I ran it through a strainer and so you can already kind of see the purple color here. And so I already made a bunch of this a couple of minutes ago. And so then this is, is what it looks like. And you can see that deep purple color here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to school and then we're gonna test it out on uh, different substances with different pHs so you can see how the anthocyanin indicator changes depending on the pH of the substance. All right, and now we're back. So what I've done is I've put in these test tubes, I've put a variety of substances with a variety of pHs. So let me show you um, what substances I actually put in here. You can see them at the bottom here. I've put hydrochloric acid. I put some soda as well. Soda usually has a relatively low pH. I just chose Sprite because it's clear. Then we have distilled white vinegar. And then we have drinking water. Sodium carbonate. And then also a really strong base, sodium hydroxide. So let's go ahead and move this over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this anthocyanin and then I'm going to put a few droplets in each of the test tubes. And you'll already see that the color is starting to change depending on where I'm dropping it into. As a good baseline, by the way, this right here, this is the water. So you'll notice that's a neutral pH of seven. 
So it pretty much has the same color as anthocyanin itself. And let's go ahead and swirl this one too. So you can, get, so you can see that green color. And what you'll notice is that this one starts out green, but then when I swirl it, it starts to decay into more of a yellow color. So full disclosure, I really quickly adjusted some things because I noticed that I, I didn't really get the colors I wanted, but so let me explain a little bit more about what I'm doing. So you're going to see right here, I kind of topped some of them off too so that the, the levels would be a little bit more equal and you could see the colors a little bit better. Also, I swapped some things around. So now the order is, um, the first one is hydrochloric acid to the left, then you have the vinegar, which is the pinker one, and then you're gonna have the water, so pretty similar there, but then what's changing is I added ammonia to this one, so this one's ammonia, and then the last two are still going to be sodium carbonate, and then sodium hydroxide, which I added a little bit more just because that yellow color is, is really cool. So what we can do is we can look at this anthocyanin indicator scale to see what the colors suggest about their pHs. So let's go ahead and compare some of those. So this red one, you know, this is a very, very strong acid. This is the hydrochloric acid. So this is closer to this end in this range. Next, we have the distilled white vinegar. That's going to be pinker. So you notice it's going to be closer to, you know, the, the three or four range. Actually, that's pretty much right on there too. Then you have pretty much exactly purple. And it's a little bit diluted, but you can see that color too. This is the water. And then going higher on the pH scale, uh, this one is sort of more, I would say it's almost a little bit between nine and 10. This is a weak base. This is the ammonia that I added. I swapped that out because I wanted to get some of that blue color in there. Then this one right here, this is a strong base, or it's a slightly stronger base, the sodium carbonate. And then a very, very strong acid, or sorry, a very, very strong base is the sodium hydroxide. And you'll notice here, it actually starts to, if there's, if it's too strong of a base, it starts to decay straight into yellow. So you'll notice that this is, is definitely decaying into that yellow color. So let's show the range again right here. You can see the differences. So this is anthocyanin being used as a pH indicator.